title should I put on this interview when it goes online then, do you think? I just talked to Susan Sarandon and you can <laughs> look at what it is. With more than 100 films during a six decade career, Susan Sarandon is an acting legend. Thelma and Louise, The Client, Stepmom and The Rocky Horror Picture Show are examples of her versatility. She often hits the headlines for her political views and activism. We are here because we will not be a cog in the machine that is dismantling our constitution, that is dismantling our Bill of Rights. She's in Paris to promote her new film, The Life and Death of John F. Donovan, where she plays the mum of a famous actor played by Game of Thrones, Jon Snow a.k.a. Kit Harrington. Ma, can I stay here tonight? Oh, you can stay here for the rest of your life. Susan Sarandon, hello. Hello. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Now, the film asks many questions about fame. What should we know of an artist? What does it matter to us? What should they reveal to us? What do you think the answer is? Oh, well, of course, commerce and art have always existed in every range of art, and that is the conundrum, right? How do you earn a living and at the same time be brave? Because in my business anyway, once you're successful creating a shoe, no one asks you to do a boot. You have to be uh, as authentic as you possibly can be, and you, uh, as I always say, I'm gonna be um, a woman and a mother longer than I'll be an actor, I'm sure, so I don't really, worry very much about having a strategy with a career. I think that's impossible. I've done everything wrong and I'm still working. So, you know, I've just been very lucky or actually it doesn't matter all that much. This is about us as a society, what we want, what we seek. I mean, what should an artist reveal of himself? And why does it matter to us? I feel like I've done everything wrong. What if I don't belong here? What if I've stolen someone else's place? You've made 100 films, though, or more, yeah. I think. Was yeah. there a moment you suddenly realised or thought, oh, wow, I am famous? Well, there was a moment about eight years in or something where I said, oh, I guess this is what I do, because initially not having studied acting and not wanting to be an actor and kind of just falling into it. It was a great way to pay off my debts, my school debt. It was a great way to travel. I've grown used to now having an effect when people see you. Sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative. One of my sons says he likes to walk behind me so he can see everybody's faces as they pass. And then we were just in New Orleans and he took pictures of himself with people taking selfies with me behind him. He did a whole series of him like this with the people behind. So you see the back of my head and you see people taking selfies. So I know it's affected my kids to a certain extent, you know, but then as they got older and they wanted autographs from sports figures, for instance, uh, they became more accepting because in the beginning, if I was out with my children, I would always say, it's up to them, I'm here with them now, so, and they would say no, and they, everyone would laugh and think that I was kidding, and then I'd say, no, <laughs> you, I'm really not gonna stop now because I'm with them. But obviously you have, um, I think it's part of the obligation of working to do press, and so if I choose to do a film, I wanna do a film that I can bear to talk about for four days in a junket. You do seem like a pretty cool mum. I read you had a tattoo um, with your son. That one, the uh, Ferdinand the Bull. Do you know that story here? No. Oh, it's such a great story. It's an old, old kid's book about a bull that's chosen because he sits on a bee and everyone thinks he's very fierce, but he really just wants to smell the flowers and he's <laughs> taken to Madrid to be in the you know, to, to to be in the ring, and then he just doesn't want to do it. But his mom says, it's okay, you can just come back and smell the flowers. So my boys always, I mean, I, that's a very condensed version. <laughs> they got it, and then I got it, yeah. <laughs> Look at you. Am I being served? <laughs> just kidding. Sorry, we're late. Oh, what a nice surprise. I didn't think you guys were going to make it. Faith, come up. Oh, well, Amy and I were supposed to go to that thing, but it got canceled. Hey, Ma, you know I don't like it on the neck. I can't help it. He smells so good. You play the main character's mother in the film. Mm -hmm. um, 
John is played by Kit Harrington. Had you watched Game of Thrones before? Yes, but whenever I watch Game of Thrones, I have to watch with my youngest son who explains the intricacies of everything that came down because I watch it in not on a regular basis, so I forget some things. So I've watched with him kind of translating. And what do you think of the mother you play in the film? I think she's very complicated. You know, it's, again, someone having to deal with fame of someone that they love and feeling very proud and gaining some kind of stature from it and at the same time feeling excluded. And she's she doesn't have much self-confidence, so she feels somewhat intimidated by his fame and that he's left her behind and uh, and also... They obviously have a special bond, but because the father has left under very bitter circumstances, she can't shut up about that, which is very difficult. If your mother every two seconds is making some kind of passive-aggressive dig about your father. But I've met Xavier's mother, and she's not a monster as far as I can tell. But um, clearly, she's in every film and with her blue eyeshadow. And uh, I, was, I, I love him, Xavier, and I find him very passionate about what he does. And... Uh, a real perfectionist and involved in every aspect of film and uh, I loved his film Mommy and so I was really thrilled when he offered me a part even if it was a small part. What I find interesting is the idea of a mother figure, but within a much more complex character. A woman who has made sacrifices and compromises. A woman who has had to confine her personality within the mother figure. What breaks out of the confines of the mother figure is what fascinates me the most and enables me to create contrasting characters. Oh, tout en contraste. Oh, God, Amy, look at that coat. Dressed for success. <laughs> oh, Grace, I thought you said they couldn't make it. Betty did it on purpose. Look at me, look at me. <laughs> but then when was he ever on time for anything? Story of his life and his dad's. Oh, I'm going to open this pie. <laughs> Out of all the roles you've done, you've done so many, and I can't even list them, the Rocky Horror Picture Show, The Hunger, The Witches of Eastwick, Thelma and Louise. Is there one role that's stuck with you always. I mean, I know you That's live with them Sophie's all. That's such a Sophie's Choice, uh, you know, question. I'd have to leave one of my babies behind. Dead Man Walking meant a lot to me because I got the book and I nursed that through and um, became dear friends with Sister Helen even before we shot it. I've had a number of films that I've really, really had fun on. I, I try to always have fun, even on Dead Man Walking. And, um, you know, I mean, Bull Durham was a big film for me because it was a, the first really great part that I'd gotten. And um, and I met Tim there, and I have two sons because of that film, so, and because of him. Since your very first role um, in Joe in 1970, um, the way we report and consume information has changed dramatically. And when I was preparing this interview, and I was sort of looking you up on the internet, lots of different headlines came up. Um, for example, <laughs> Susan Sarandon arrested at anti-Trump protests. Susan Sarandon says Trump unintentionally energised politics. Susan Sarandon on her love affair with David Bowie. Susan Sarandon discusses sexuality. Lots about your cleavage that I'm not going to read out. What do you make of these headlines? Well, the problem now that's very different is that there's so much clickbait. There's so many headlines that don't even have anything to do with the actual article or video, if you read them. And people get are so frustrated and so panicked right now and so full of anger that they see a headline and they just go off online for, I mean, and, and then it becomes a fact. And in fact, if you read the article or the interview, um, you see that the that the the clickbait had nothing to do or was completely misconstrued. At Toronto Film Festival, I was talking about this to a journalist who then wrote an article and put in quotes the clickbait as if then I had said that. So they just further <laughs> <laughs> made that a fact when I hadn't said that. I'm very lucky that I can get information to people that they don't have because mainstream media isn't reporting Standing Rock, isn't reporting Yemen, isn't re talking about a lot of things that people should know about, right? And, and maybe not all just the Kardashians. So you want to get a little something of something real. So I'm lucky in that I, even though I'm not an expert on anything except my own survival, 
Um, I can give people experts to listen to. I can talk about people that don't have their voice. I went to Lesbos because people weren't, who were these people that were drowning? Um, so I can go take those pictures and bring them back. That's all I am. I'm not pretending to have the answers. I'm not pretending to tell anybody what to think. But if you don't have all the information, uh, then I can, I can say, well, did you know this? Now, sometimes as in the election, uh, you know, by pointing out somebody's voting record or facts about where someone takes their money, um, that was construed as, as attacking someone. But I think if you're hiring politicians to work for you, you should know what they did in their last job. You should know who's paying them now. It's different in Europe. You know, when you see news, when you see journalists in Europe, a lot of them ask questions. Like someone will answer and they'll say, oh, but what about this? In the United States, they're just talking heads for most of the mainstream media. You don't learn anything new, and it's just on a loop. Um, so you're lucky you still have some information you can get from mainstream TV. Susan Sarn, thank you. You're welcome. Dear Rupert, I cannot think of a more singular friend. No one will understand this friendship. <laughs>